welcome everybody back to the weekly independent investor channel uh, update on the highly on progress it's been fast and furious and the the flagship announcement uh, this week was uh, obviously the wholesome order that was placed uh, for binding orders uh, backed by uh, deposits uh, this is from wholesome uh, they are a cement company that uh, is uh, interested in using the Hypertruck ERX to advance their clean energy initiatives. They've got advanced technology that exists uh, within the creation of their uh, cement that uh, is uh, a more environmentally friendly method to do so. I uh, want to welcome everybody to uh, the uh, message here, subscribers to the channel and new visitors to the channel who uh, are interested in uh, uncovering what this company is doing here uh, still at the ground level level of the, of the company. And uh, this is going to be the bottom line. Uh, the bottom line ha has been uh, generated for your viewing entertainment and to understand from my perspective, uh, what I believe is going to be the driving uh, flagship um, uh, attributes of this company that we look to um, uh, measure its progress on. And I want to bring your attention to one very specific quote here. And this is going to be uh, the bottom line number one. And as we work through this uh, video, I want you guys to really question what it is we're looking to achieve here. Um, are we looking to uh, uh, generate discussion around this topic or are we looking to do something better in way of results? Um, and when I speak about the bottom line, I'm not looking to engage in a back and forth banter of, of he said, said, she said, or uh, I'm right and you're wrong and you have to accept my my dialogue. That That is not my intent. My intent is to further the discussion uh, on this front as it pertains to EVs. Now, this week, EVs uh, got a boost across the board. Um, Nikola, uh, Hylion, and Hyzon, which are the three that I cover uh, most intimately, and Hylion being the uh, largest um, uh, shareholding uh, position in my particular portfolio. And so it's the one that I'm the most bullish on by far, um, leaps and bounds. But I do cover the face, uh, space holistically um, for you guys and your interest in understanding my current disposition in the EV space. I went ahead and sold the um, uh, Nikola contracts that I bought uh, on the pop, made a quick 24% in one day. I'm happy with that. I'm out. Uh, I made a little pro profit and I'm good. Um, I'll continue to monitor the landscape and um, Hylion having come off of its base and uh, me picking up my long contracts there uh, with a $3 strike. I'm obviously in the money there as well. Uh, but uh, that's the one I'm interested in holding long. And it's for reasons that I'm going to disclose to you in this video uh, that you'll find that uh, if nothing else, this story is extremely, uh, extremely attractive in what they're trying to do. And so the bottom line, number one, is the quote that I picked out of this wholesome order. And the quote is at the very end of uh, a, a, a statement on the order from Thomas Healy uh, talking about without sacrificing their business needs. And I really want to bring you guys home on this in understanding that since the beginning of the Hylion opportunity and what it could mean for uh, would-be shareholders, it is to understand that Hylion's objective in this was not um, single tier. It was a multi-tier approach to providing solutions to the fleet without compromising their business needs. What does that mean? Um, I, I think all too often we get into this banter of speaking along the lines of we need to go green and we need to do so at all cost. Um, that is the wrong approach. That is the wrong approach. And I'm a YouTuber. I don't know much about the trucking industry, and I sure as heck don't know a whole heck of a lot about the fleet logistics business either, and I don't presume to. What I do understand is looking at business holistically and understanding that businesses on the bottom line are not going to sacrifice their bottom line business for the sake of the green initiative. They're not going to do that, and you can debate me all you want. The fact of the matter is these companies answer to shareholders. And they must, and I do repeat must, look at this opportunity as a step toward decarbonization. But if you're thinking that somehow they're going to make these decisions in a box or make these decisions in a vacuum, which would should suggest that they're going to go green at all cost, 
They're going to take on new initiatives when fuel costs right now are out of control, when they're going to take these leaps and bounds with new technology without scrutinizing these in fleet demos and uh, introducing them into their fleets and understanding for themselves how these solutions are going to impact their bottom line, what type of durability and efficiency they can get out of these. You're freaking crazy. You're freaking crazy. I, nor anybody else, would expect them to do that. And it seems like somehow the banter is that we're on a race right now and that somehow certain solutions are going to win out and other solutions are going to go by the wayside. That is about the most shallow and stupid approach to this that I've ever heard. It's a cool thing that I get to come on and I come on once a week. Um, so you get to build up some of the uh, anticipation as to what I'm going to say once a week. I don't come out with videos every day. I think that's stupid too. Nobody's opinion is that important. Nobody. I don't care who you think you are. The only thing that's going to matter in this is the marked progress that will be realized on the bottom line. The bottom line. And the bottom line, hate to suggest to you, is not a YouTube commentary. It doesn't mean shit. Okay? Just doesn't mean anything. That is not the bottom line that we're looking to generate dialogue around. Will Hylion go out of business? I don't know. If that's your bottom line, you're entitled to your opinion. Absolutely. But as we march into a cleaner future, which Hylion and the others as well, Nicola and Hyzon, are looking to evolve their businesses with the anticipation of stepping into a greener future for fleets. It is going to be glaringly obvious which of those solutions are able to deliver on that front in an exclusive mission to go and decarbonize the fleet, which takes a black eye a lot of the times for being um, a, a dirty industry, one that is responsible for a, a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, and stepping into an environment for a cleaner future and the sustainability of the fleets. I'll talk about that a little bit, but they will not. And this is the bottom line. They will not step into new technology and sacrifice the bottom line. Thomas Healy alludes to this, and it's something that stuck out to me in the Wholesome Order. The Wholesome Order is great. I was familiar with Lafarge. I had heard of Wholesome. Um, I'm obviously in uh, you know, the, the shipping business at the ports, but um, this is uh, based in Texas. Uh, so it was interesting enough to me to have it go all the way to the um, deposits backed by or orders backed by deposits. I thought that was a huge step and uh, a huge commitment by a huge company that uh, obviously is a step in the right direction. Um, I, I think you could probably derive a bottom line inference to that as well in that some may suggest that this is just somehow a, a, a futile effort um, because they don't have the right name. Uh, I've heard that floated through the YouTube community, uh, and I will repeat, evidently, Hylion picked the wrong name, therefore, they're not going to succeed. In, in other words, Nicola, if you say it correctly, Nicola, it just rolls off your tongue, and it's just a beautiful thing. Tesla, it rolls off the tongue, and it's just beautiful. But when you say Hylion, it's it somehow, so I don't want to invest in that company because they picked the wrong name. You could call it neon green cow patty for all I care, because if they deliver on the bottom line, rest assured, it's not going to matter what their name is, okay? The only thing that's going to matter is the bottom line to the fleets, to the positive, and making sure that they do not detract from the bottom line and making sure that they don't have to change business practices so drastically to take on... Um, it, 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 an unacceptable level of risk within their businesses. Remember, these are publicly traded companies. A lot of these are Fortune 500 companies that have been doing this a long, long time. And they know that things come and go. Solutions come and go. Technology, as slow as it's been to develop, they've had um, to fight those opportunities off and scrutinize. And yes, I believe that fleets are open to the dialogue but they will not sacrifice the bottom line efficiency. And that indeed, my friends, is the bottom line. Number two, 
fleets are looking for sustainable. This is something that I got out of the um, the wholesome order. They're looking to become sustainable, and I think we need to talk about what that means. They're looking at a reduction. Okay, um, very very few times have I found the elimination of greenhouse gases in the discussion, except for uh, in the YouTube community, which again, uh, seemingly has all the answers. And if you just want to tune into a daily upload, um, telling you how you should think one way, you just need to think one way. And you just need to think one way to see if you say it over and over again, people start to actually believe you. I think the scary part about it is the more that you say it, I think the more you believe it yourself. And, and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is incredible. I sit on the sidelines and I laugh my ass off. I think it's funny as hell. You guys know me as a YouTuber. You sit across from me, look dead smack in my eyes and tell me I'm not serious about this. It doesn't matter. Okay. The, the, the cool and the shitty thing about YouTube is it provides a, a conduit for smart people like myself and morons to come on and share their idiotic opinions with the world. What's even more interesting is that sheep, just like lambs to the slaughter, want to follow those opinions blindly. And it's like, the more I hear it, the more I want to believe it because this person's elegant and has a phenomenal microphone that just elegantly brings the voice through the microphone so elegantly. Nicola, it just rolls off your tongue just so elegantly, doesn't it? What are we looking for for sustainability? What does sustainability mean? It means that the decisions that are made today have to render results down the line. I'll say it again. The decisions that are made today have to render results down the line, okay? They have to be able to meet their bottom dollar TCO. TCO doesn't exist if you can't look at a piece of technology and expect to introduce that into your fleets and get some rigor and worth out of it. I earmark seven years to the minimum and, and 10 years to the top side. Okay. Evidently, there's been some fleet demos with Budweiser, uh, Anheuser-Busch, uh, with Nicola, and uh, I've yet to understand the results of those. So if you want to sit here and talk about uh, highly on not sharing any information, I think that's an escape to thinking, and I think that's a jaded uh, and a convenient position to take uh, when, in fact, our boy, Thomas Healy, was across the pond speaking at the Global Forum for Decarbonization. And oh, by the way, he was with Agility CEO. And if you've had your head in the sand uh, for the last couple of years in understanding what agility brings to the table, I highly look at how, uh, look at how big of a player they are in the logistics space. Okay. All right. They are partnered with Hylion. Whether or not you want to talk about the thousand hypertruck orders and whether or not it will come to fruition into the future, fine and dandy. The bottom line is it will or it won't. Okay. But the very fact that they are partnered with Hylion is a net positive in, in, into the future. Okay. To understand that they've garnered a business relationship amongst many others with some fleets is worth taking note. Yeah. You can take pop shots all, all you want. That's totally fine. Again, um, what I would like to tell you that the bottom line is that neither me nor you nor any of the other financial gurus on YouTube, their opinions don't matter. That's the bottom line. It doesn't matter. We do this to strike up discussion. We do this to hopefully further the discussion. I think, unfortunately, we take one step forward and we take two steps back all too often because people aren't steadfast with their commitment. You can't really look at them and understand that one week they're one way and one week they're the next, right? Is it wishy-washy? Well, I, I don't know. I guess, see, YouTube allows for that type of banter to happen, right? God bless America. It's free speech. And say what you want, all right? It's lovely, all right? It's lovely. Attempts to control the dialogue as well. I, I, I left an interesting comment on one channel that I've provided a lot of shout outs to, and I didn't receive one single iota of thumbs up or response back to me. Now that could be one of two things, either the sheep branded with Nick Nicola, all right, is dominating that community. And they look at me as a, a Hallian bull. Other, other than that, an enemy. I'm an enemy of that community, right? Um, I say that tongue in cheek because I find it really, really ironic how the, the discussion and the uh, momentum and the tide shift one way to the other uh, when we want to pick our loyal loyalties. Welcome to the welcome to the team. Welcome to the community. You kidding me? I don't need to be part of any community. 
I'm my own best advocate. I know exactly what I'm doing. You want to follow, you'll probably profit from it. But I didn't receive one single acknowledgement at all. And with all due respect, um, I deserve that acknowledgement. I do. Tell me I suck and that you, you hate my content. So that's number one. Either that, number two, is I've been blocked from the channel. That is an interesting way of controlling the dialogue. You know how many people I've ever blocked from my channel in six years? Zero, all but zero. Zero people. Why? Because I don't fear what other people say. I don't fear that my dialogue will somehow chip away what agenda I'm trying to write, whatever the hell that means. Again, this is YouTube. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All right? You're probably just as insignificant now as you were in your life, okay? And this is somehow your opportunity to come and share your grand revelations with, with, with an audience that you can dupe into following you. Nicola, it just, it's so elegant and so beautiful. I just can hardly say it. I don't even know what it stands for. People shouldn't buy the stock because of the name of the company. Don't buy the stock because of the name of the company, because if that's your shallow application on this company, I do not want you with me on this ride. <laughs> you can leave. Kindly leave, all right? Sustainable. I want you to think about that. Think about the happy medium here when you're talking about some of the technologies that are being brought to bear by some of these companies that are taking the leap of the faith, the, 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 the round peg fits in their business. Maybe the Nikola product fits. Maybe the Hyzon solution fits. Maybe the Hylion solution fits, right? And they're looking at these as an attempt to achieve sustainability, not elimination. Again, sustainability, not elimination. Check the definitions. It is the indeed the bottom line in what we're looking to achieve here today. Number three, existing infrastructure. It doesn't matter. It's no problem. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that there's already existing infrastructure. It doesn't matter that we've already had 5% validation going on for many, many years in CNG. It doesn't matter. Okay. Because that is not a net zero solution. It is not elimination of all carbon. It is not the demise of the class eight trucking space altogether because they need to go under while there are other pollutative uh, industries out there. Okay, class eight's not it, all right? We have other countries out there that are doing far more damage to the environment than this bullseye that the class eight space, space has on its back. And we're all applauding their efforts in marching toward more of a sustainable future. We get that. We totally do. But to somehow ignore that existing infrastructure exists nowadays to increase that 5% to something that is a little bit more uh, of, a, of a dominant player in a huge class eight space that we're looking at is really, really irresponsible quite frankly. And to suggest somehow that CNG politically is, is losing its political edge, I, wow, um, it comes out the mouth, but sometimes I wonder if it should just be coming out the backside instead. Honestly, I don't know what else to say. There's just incredible amount that I could say, but I, I want to keep it as above board as I possibly can, right? Nicola, just... Just say it. Just say it like that. It just elegantly rolls off. You should buy 100 shares next week when the market opens up because of the stock name. Super, super important, man. There's, uh, there's history that goes in, and people just feel like they own something beautiful when they own Nicola. They feel like they own something beautiful because of the name of the company. The existing infrastructure and some of the pipe dreams that I've heard, um, I, I'd like Nicola to announce that they have uh, infrastructure that exists that's going to be able to service all these trucks that they're going to put out. Now, they estimate three to 500 trucks, and everybody's jumping for joy. Everybody's like, they've won the race. This is incredible. We need no fleet validation. We're good to go. We can just roll it out. We're good. They have 12,000 miles. That's what they have with Anheuser-Busch. Um, that's the bottom line. Okay. Oh, Ryan, they're in the fleets right now. Really? 
where are the results to those? See, what is fair in love and war is to understand that, and I, I saw a quote on one of the YouTube channels, and I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to name names anymore. Um, no more free promotion from the Independent Investor channel. The only promotion that's going to be uh, rendered on my channel are those companies that I deem uh, eligible for promotion. And this is one of them. I do it free of charge every single week. Uh, I'm a bull shareholder in the company. It's no problem. And I do this to bring awareness to the company. But um, the comment was uh, of interest to me in that somehow Nikola was going to magically make 600 miles range, uh, whereas now they make 450. And that somehow that the technology was going to advance to such a place where now they weren't going to render 450, which is insignificant compared to the Hypertruck YRX and the prospects and, and, and the, um, uh, the range that they're able to get out of that. It's insignificant. It's stupid, right? Oh, but they're going to change, but we, we want be, because we want to eliminate uh, carbon. We don't want to reduce. All right. We want to eliminate. Oh, and fleets want to do that too. That's why I come on every single day and pump YouTube through to make you understand that the green initiative is the only thing that matters. We're not going to have a trucking fleet in 10 years because they've all taken this uh, leap dive off of the cliff here uh, for, for um, uh, uh, reducing or, excuse me, eliminating uh, carbon emissions. Uh, and they're going to do so at the expense of their business. But oh, by the way, we're going to clean the environment by, by eliminating the class eight space. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and do that, okay? But some real pipe dreams. Um, some mobile fueling stations. This is what the Nikola camp is talking about. Excuse me. This is what the Nikola camp is offering right now as far as the solution. They're going to actually take mobile fueling sites to the middle of I-10 in the middle of New Mexico, and they're going to be available to service their lines. Does anybody else out there call bullshit ever? Or is it just me? I, I know the Hylion community is like, oh, Ryan, yeah, you're the man. I'm like, I'm not the man. I'm just, this is what they're, this is what they're presenting. How is it that they've been able to sit across from industry and provide this as a bottom line efficiency to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, um, to the overall logistics chain that they run efficiently, I might add. Yeah, if you just come with me, we'll, we'll make you a range at some point down the future of 600 miles. We don't have it right now, but, but we'll get there. If we build more fueling stations, the cost of hydrogen fuel will come down over time. Mm -hmm. Believe me, buy my product. Buy my product. Just believe me. That's all you got to do. Come with us. Embark on this journey. And we'll have you, we'll have you with the complete elimination of the carbon that's ruining our planet for our children into the future by 2070. You're not going to have a business by 2070, but let's just go ahead and just run, run it into the ground now. Nicola, say it with me, chant it with me, chant it with me. This is the business meeting that they're having with the fleets, right? Um, I think the fleets are hip to this. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I, I actually hope Nicola does succeed. I, I actually do. I, I just, what appalls me, no pun intended, what appalls me is the lack of attention toward what is supposedly going to be better for the environment all the way around. I, if somebody's going to profess that the technology exists and that we need to explore all options to um, a better future uh, for our children for tomorrow in all actuality. Well, the, the bottom line is these solutions need to be introduced to the rigor of class eight. Um, we need to be having an honest discussion about what the real payload capacity of these uh, vehicles are. We need to have a real discussion about the real reduction in carbon scores that these solutions, okay? I'll put my solution up to any, any of them. But what is the carbon score if, if, if Nikola beats Hylion in a head-to-head? -head, what's more efficient? What is the bottom line durability? I agree with you. All of these companies need to be more transparent right now in what they can do. I'm scrutin uh, scrutinizing Hylion. I have yet to hear that bottom line projection because I heard it on the uh, Duner interview where he talked about pressing uh, Thomas Healy 
which was a great question on how many units they need to turn out to break even. The Hylion community always already has that earmarked between four and 5,000 units, okay? Irrespective of what it's going to do for the stock price, because the stock price will be up, but from a business perspective, they need to understand that year over year, how they're going to meet those bottom line minimums. Are the OEMs on board enough, okay, to, to deliver that sustainability for Hylion, who's looking to provide a solution that is going to help with sustainability into the future. These are all fair and valid questions. I, I totally get it. I get it. But I spend a lot of my time wasted, I might add, refuting what it is that I hear on the landscape that's just, man alive, I wish I could just agree with you. I wish I could, but it's appalling. No pun intended. It's appalling. Come on. Your, your, your opinion is not that important. Let it go. Let it go. Go do something else with your time for crying out loud. Go seek out the companionship of a, of a female companion. She'll help you waste some of your time in a good way. It's all good. All right. Once a week, I get to come on and I get to refute and I get to talk about, well, the stock is up week over week. The stock is up month over month. Check the charts. They're like, Ryan, this has been terrible. It's been terrible. Really? Over the last month, it's been phenomenal. I'm happy to be part of this company. Is it going to go back down to $2? I don't know. May, may we have seen the bottom? It's a possibility. How many people out there are entertaining the possibility that this thing will never see $2 again? How many people out there are entertaining the prospects of seeing a four or a five or even a six in front of this stock price and never, ever seeing a two again? There's a lot of people who have thrown in the towel on this thing. You may have missed the bottom. I hope you have. I hope you have. You, you deserve a swift kick in the teeth. You really do. Because your opinions, as elegant and as frequent as they are, no doubt about it, putting out 14 videos a day, that, that is awesome. It still does not change the fact that um, quality over quantity is never, is always, always the bottom line. Always. Quantity over quality never, ever works. And you should realize that. You really should, okay? Because you're not going to change the discussion insofar as changing it for the fleets and their opinions about what solution they choose. It's not going to be the influences of the independent investor channel that come on and, and influence the, the fleets out there. Are you freaking crazy? This is a small, insignificant YouTube channel. I'm already over myself. Hell, I've been over myself my entire life. It's all good. I know I'm not perfect. Hey, I know I take a crap just like everybody else. Okay. Hey, you can't say that on, on YouTube, Brian. You can't say that. You can't admit to it. You've got you've to come on and be this uh, beaming light of perfection. No, I don't. Um, I scoff at the very face of that. That's why people come on and they enjoy my message because I throw it the hell out there. All right. I throw it the hell out there. I'm brave enough to tell you the bottom line and I'm brave enough to integrate and make poop part of the lesson. All right. Stay with me. It's appalling. All right. Number four, the bottom line is the specs, the durability, and the performance. The durability we're a little light on in this industry. Hyzon, Nikola, and Hylion. We're a little light on this, okay? We need to get these into the rigors of class eight space. And we're a ways away from this. I've continued to impress upon the investing community and patrons to my message that we are in a bridging uh, phase here with the company. We need to bridge our way to commercialization. And in between now and then, we are going to have fleet demos and introductions uh, into the fleets to see how they uh, respond to the rigors of the, the class eight. Um, I used to be a commercial fisherman. Okay. I know how much demand we used to put over diesel engines. And I can tell you guys, I'm an, I'm an effing believer. Okay. You can keep fuel, water, and air to a diesel engine. I used to be a skiff man in Alaska, which means I was towing with my hair on fire for 20 hours a day on my Cummins engine. And I can swear by it. My Cummins engine, I could beat the holy hell out of that engine and it would still keep going. Riggers. Okay. I don't think the class eight space is, space is any different in putting a huge amount of demand on this new technology, and it's going to put it to the test. And durability is really going to be the great separator. It's going to be one of those real bottom line differentiators between these solutions. 
I want them all to make it. I really do. But when I see pipe dreams coming out, well, they're just going to do this and they're going to do this. And, and, and Nicola has made an addition of the of tray that actually floats cargo from point A to point B. It, believe me, it's incredible. It's coming. They're, they're an incredible, they are a company just like everybody else. And sooner or later, their technology has, needs to be able to stand up to the rigors of the class eight space. That is the bottom line. Whether or not they make it or not, I hope they do. I don't know. I don't know. They probably will be just fine because of the name of their company, Nicola. It's phenomenal, right? They'll probably do just fine. Hylion will have a much uh, harder road to sow, no pun intended again, uh, because they've chosen the wrong name for the company. Again, I really think that they should have went with Neon Green Cow Patty. Um, it wouldn't have changed my disposition in investing in the company, but I just think it would have been a hell of a lot cooler name, like Neon Green Cow Patty. Uh, and, and you could just say it as elegantly with Tesla and Nikola. They just, they demand respect and they demand shareholder activity. They really do. All right. Specs. They need to be able to deliver bottom line, total cost of ownership. That is the bottom line. Okay. These fleets are going to look at these solutions just the way Wholesome has done. And, you know, the stock popped a little bit. I don't know if it was based on the news or I don't know if it was based on the EV space in general, getting a little bit of tailwind. I'm not sure. It's positive news for the company. It's not as if, I, look, Hylion could come out anytime and say Wholesome drops orders of order, you know, uh, deposits. They've surrendered their deposits because they don't like the product. Uh, I've heard nothing but positive. With fleets coming in both at the ride and drive event, which sold this order, I might add, um, and 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 fleets interest in 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 the existing uh, products, especially on the hybrid EX side, companies love it. They love it. That's the bottom line. So you can continue to put. I, I'd suggest maybe putting out two or three videos a day, but the bottom line is fleets love it. So continue to yell into a vacuum. I guess if that's what you think is is important. I'm here to tell you that it's not, and I throw myself in that same category. It's insignificant. If you find that there's interest in my banter and, and, and talking about all kinds of cool things and hear about me coming on and talking about me taking a dump just like everybody else, go ahead and continue to do that. I am trying to further the dialogue. It's that simple, okay? And the reality is we are bright, bright brand new in this inception to this uh, cleaner future. We're at the beginning. It's gone back and forth. It's gonna, we're going to stand up a war. God dang it. It's us and you. And we're going to, we hate these people. We hate those people. And we hate everybody. Hell, you hate yourself, man. You hate everybody that you come into contact with anyway, because you're an unhappy person anyway. All right. Why don't you try turning over a new leaf? All right. Take that female persuasion that I suggested, man. Give it a whirl. Yeah. Give it a test drive. No pun intended. Give it a test drive. See how you like it. You might find that you have less time to come on and banter into the YouTube vacuum, um, and you might get some uh, enjoyment out of it other than just always criticizing a, a company like this that is trying to do good for the future. Again, whether or not they go bankrupt or not, I don't know. Maybe they do. Uh, maybe they don't. Have you ever entertained the prospects that, uh, based on the information at hand, that they do just fine? Do you think that the company is working every day to uh, do a nosedive into the ground and cease to exist? Is, do you think that that's what they're doing every day when they show up to work and work to advance this technology? I don't know. I, maybe, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe people just aren't as proud as this company as they should be because of the name of the company. They picked the wrong name. Okay. All right. Number five. The business structure. Um, this is going to be a make or break. Okay. This is the great differentiator between looking at a Hyzon and a Nikola and looking at Hylion, which I think, unfortunately, they get linked together um, and they're completely different business structures. Okay. Hylion needs the OEMs. And it is that very clarification as a shareholder that is the number one question. And if the Discord group or if there's any patrons in watching this message, I know they typically take and share this message as they should. It's free advertisement. I'm glad to do it. Thank you very much. Um, nobody ever says thank you. Nobody. <laughs> Except the few commenters. I do appreciate you guys. 
hell yeah, I, I appreciate y'all all, all, all the well. Um, but this is this is the key for me is the business structure and how the integration with the OEMs is critical for Hylion. It's critical. In other words, is Peter Bilt going to volunteer four to 5,000 slots so that Hylion can at least break even? Um, is there going to be a limit to the amount of um, build slots that they award uh, through P the Peterbilt plant or the OEM hubs that have been discussed? Um, I have my doubts. I certainly do. You want to criticize this company? I'm I'm more than capable of drawing up a bare case. I've done it before. Highly on bulls hate it. Um, me, I, I I don't care. I don't. I'm not looking to banter to you, bear or bull. I don't care. I'm going to give my opinion, and it's going to be the way I feel at the time I'm giving it. But I could come up with a bare case for Highly on all day. And again, I have done it. It is important to uh, discuss both sides of the coin, and and this is really. Um, what I want to have clarity on, it's been asked on earnings calls past going back a year on the earnings calls where have you talked about the uh, cost of production? Have you talked about the backlog of uh, materials that are going to need to be available at the OEM hubs? Are you going to do it in Austin? I, I, nobody knows this stuff. I know it's been said. And it's like, you're going to build the Hypertruck ERX kits and then ship it to the OEM uh, in, in, at the Peterbilt headquarters, which, which is still located in Texas. I, I, I don't know. We could probably earn a little bit of clarity. And I don't, think, I don't think Thomas Healy and the team knows. I think they have enough of a framework to understand that those relationships will be there into the future. But it's a little bit premature to share uh, in those renderings uh, in, in the short term. I think we will have big announcements in the future on how they're going to meet these, but that is the big what if. That is it right there, okay? But the way Hylion is going about this is the right way with regard to their business structure. The way they're going about this is to augment existing trucks and not to completely replace. You see the difference here? The difference here is to collaborate with not to completely uh, replace, collaborate, replace, collaborate, highly on, collaborate, Nicola, completely replace. That's the business model. That's the bottom line. All right. Place your bets as you see fit. Okay. But I sometimes sit back and I listen to people try to draw up a bull case for Nicola and Nicola spends money like it's going out of style and people will combat me and say, well, look what they've been able to render. They're basically their own OEM. They've thrown up a plant. Hey, look, if you throw as much money at any solution to just erect a plant, okay, you can build anything. And that's exactly what's happened. Now, the, the, the verdict is still out as to whether or not these renderings are going to turn into something special, whether or not the fleet is just going to fall all over themselves to, 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 to buy Nicola, because it's fun to say they're just going to roll out and just accept this whole idea of giving up a ton of range that they get right, right now currently with diesel. And there's no ramification for running diesel right now. None, right? There's the political ramification, there's the optics, the negative optics of being part of an industry that is um, 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 soiling the planet, right? But I, I, think, I think when we're looking at business structure, I think it's fair to suggest that the business model that Hylian has taken in being business lean in providing what is important on the truck and no more letting Peterbilt do their thing, I think eventually is going to play out. If I'm wrong, I will be wrong. Okay. If people aren't going to change, then they still keep the status quo of ordering 45,000 Peterbilt trucks a year and Hylion will get zero of those orders. What do you think the possibility of that actually happening is with everything that we know right now? Okay. Is it because Hylion is a bad name for the company? So therefore, people are going to look at it and go, hmm, I, I don't like this. I just, I like the solution, but I certainly don't like the name of the company, okay? Um, Nicola, I, I hate the, the product, but I just love the name of the company. Therefore, we're going to go with Nicola, okay? We're going to go with Nicola because it's just fun to say. Just say it. It just makes you feel better. It really does. It makes you feel better about yourself. It makes you feel like you're part of a community that just loves the environment and completely wants to eliminate that, that, that carbon and that, that devil fossil fuel. It's terrible.
<laughs> the bottom line is we're going to continue to run diesel for the next 20 years. There's the freaking bottom line. You can dispute me all you want. Diesel's not going away. All right. Anytime we get any type of geopolitical hiccup and it starts to impact our reliance on diesel and fossil fuels and all of the things that come from the derivatives of crude oil, um, people lose their freaking cotton picking mind, boy, they, they lose their minds. We are not going away from diesel. We are looking to reduce our reliance upon fossil fuels. That's what we're looking to do. That's the bottom line, okay? Well, C and G is dirty, Ryan. You're missing the effing point, okay? We are looking to reduce. We are looking to reduce. We are looking to reduce. Am I the only one on this earth that understands this? Am I the only one? Does the stock have to go to $100 before you'll agree with me? And it, and it will. And people will come into this channel like rogues and they'll be like, dude, this guy's a spiritual insight. And I'll be like, no, I just looked at what is, um, what is actually going on in the industry right now. This, that's what's going on, right? So it's absolutely critical to understand the business model that you're looking to step into, all right? Number six, the sheer reality is the class eight space right now runs on 95% diesel. I love it. I love diesel engines. I've explained to you that my diesel engine kept me alive in Alaska. Okay. So if you don't think that I'm a foregone uh, expert on this topic, um, I beg to differ. I don't just come on and just banter every single day about how awesome diesel is. I don't, I could, I could that Cummins engine. I tell you what, I beat the ever living hell out of that for four straight years. And there were skiff men before me that beat the ever living hell out of that. I took care of it. I know how to take care of engines. You have to take care of them. Okay. But the performance and the durability, second to none, second to none, second to none. Now, this is what we're up against. We have fleets that have durability proven out decades after decades, but they're, but they're going to give all that away. They're going to give it all away. Okay. Because this YouTuber is coming out with multiple videos every day saying, look, Nicola is the way of the future. Nicola is the way of the future. Okay. We need to really listen to this guy to hell with what we know. Okay. This is only our business. Okay. This individual was a personal counselor, but, 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 but they know a hell of a lot more about the truck trucking and class eight space than I do. We need to go ahead and just throw everything that we know about the reliability and the bottom line anticipation of what it takes to support the diesel infrastructure right? Servicing, technicians, everything that could be looked at and scrutinized going forward with the integration of these new solutions, okay? We're going to shit can all that and get rid of it. It's all gone. It's all gone, okay? No more diesel, okay? Diesel is synonymous with the devil, okay? We're going to give it all away. It's going away. It's going away because the YouTube community has decided that diesel is no longer politically correct, let me tell you what, that is the most far-fetched, out of touch with reality that I have ever heard. Diesel's not going any way, anywhere. And as much as you don't want to hear that from me, I'm sorry, but that's the truth. This is the truth. This is the truth. Okay? Diesel is not going anywhere. The bottom line right now is that 95% is dominated by diesel. What would you suggest fleet to do? What would you suggest that they do? Maintain certain lines that they're running diesel on? Yeah, perhaps. Earmark those lines that may be eligible. They may need an oomph in horsepower, double tandem application, et cetera, et cetera, where the hybrid EX could work, right? Oh, wait a minute. Just go with Nicola because it's fun to say, Nicola, right? Oh, well, they can't deliver the horsepower. So therefore, it's not a viable solution. We're looking to provide solutions without sacrificing their business needs. Wow, there's a concept. There's a concept that I can get behind to the tune of about 12,000 shares. <laughs> there's a lot of people in the Discord that have a heck of a lot bigger position for me. I'm just a small fry, no big deal. Um, that position makes sense for me and it's an investment of a lifetime for me. And it's just that simple. Never been so bullish on this company's for the bottom line, uh, elements that I'm sharing with you today. Uh, and it, it, it comes right down to 
questioning how much you think the status quo is going to change and what direction that status quo is going to change into. That's it. And I just think some of these interesting perspectives that I hear through social media are, are pipe dreams. They are. They're pipe dreams. I'm not saying that those solutions aren't going to be introduced in the fleet, but to suggest somehow that your solution is going to be the end-all, be-all, you need to pull head out of backside because it is severely, severely lodged up there. And I'm just trying, I'm trying my best to encourage you, I don't know, to seek out reality. Hi, real world. How are you? It's nice to meet you. Wow. I, I've been, I've had my head up my ass my entire life. It's so good to meet you. I got reality coming out my freaking ears. I come on and I share it with you guys every single week with regard to this topic. I mean, I share other topics where I do live streams and I talk about other cool stuff in empowering and helping people in their lives. Um, this banter between back and forth YouTube channels that are both insignificant doesn't matter at all. doesn't matter. It could be very lucrative. It will be for me. It will be. And then people will be like, God oh, dang, right? This has been amazing. God oh, dang it is. And nobody's saying that now. Now's the time to give proper kudos and nobody will say it. Nobody. You want to invest in a company on the ground floor? I would suggest you do it at 30 excuse me, as at three before it turns to 30 and 90 and 130. Okay. Now's your time. You want to do it. Buy low, sell high. Okay. All right. Most retail investors just bastardize that very bottom line philosophy about stock market investing. Now is the time to scrutinize it. It's going back to two. I don't care if it goes to two or one or three or six or nine. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. What I care about is progress with the company as they look to penetrate these bottom line initiatives that I think are should be really the focus of discussion uh, in this specific topic or genre when we're talking about uh, the EV advancement, because we're finally making real traction. And I think, unfortunately, the whole back and forth about uh, CNG is going away and it's politically uh, incorrect and, 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 and diesel is the devil um, and, and, and Hylion has a, has a crappy name. Um, those types of idiotic statements, maybe we can do away with that. Maybe we can look to, I don't know, collaborate the way that Hylion is looking to collaborate. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe the objectives is to replace all existing YouTube channels out there and just be the dominant king of YouTube. Good, good on you for that. I totally wish you all the best in that. Um, that is a noble, a noble aspiration. Be the king of YouTube and lead a bunch of morons that uh, uh, seemingly want to follow you at every turn. That's, that's lovely. Um, the Independent Investor Channel actually tries to teach you to think on your own. Yeah, I don't know. There's a noble idea. Think on your own, right? Don't listen to people on YouTube. I'm the only YouTuber out there that says, hey, don't watch me. If you don't like me, don't subscribe to my channel. And if you want to hit the thumbs down button, go ahead. Be my guest. It doesn't matter. YouTube doesn't pay me to hit either one. It doesn't matter. Hit what you want. All right. Number seven, bottom line that's going to drive this thing is sales, sales. And if you haven't paid attention to the emboldening of the sales book, the order book from Hylion, I would suggest that you pay attention because it's changing and it's morphing every single week. It is changing for the battle better slowly. And I think we're early on in the game. I, I said, you know, it's interesting that we're getting these um, back based on a, a ride and drive experience that these companies had enough to place tens of thousands of, of dollars of orders to secure these uh, order slots and to queue them up even in advance of the innovation council. I think it's great. It provides the, the pressure on the innovation council. I don't know what the council is doing. They're freaking sleeping. Rwan, where are they in this whole thing? Uh, Green Path Logistics, they're my favorite. They kick ass. They're like, yeah, we're going all highly on. We're good. Yeah. Where's the other Innovation Council members? Where's Wegmans? Hell, they were the first one. We drove all the way up to New York to provide it to Wegmans. Hello, Wegmans. Wake up. Kick them off. Put somebody else in there. Put, a, put Wholesome on the Innovation Council. Hell, keep Wegman. Put him in the penalty box. I don't care. Expand the Innovation Council to 20 members because you got, you got folks, private companies like Detmar, that provides more salute to, solution to Hylion than Anheuser Bush at this point. Let's get going. And I think it's great. These orders come through. It's like, well, those build slots are uh, at a premium. So if the, if the Innovation Council wants to continue to sleep, which again, they've done for many, many decades, they have convenience to do so, right? They'll just continue and they'll miss out. I think it's great. 
creating that back back pressure, eventually they're going to have to come over the top and be like, you know what? These guys are are scrambling to change their fleet. They get to fly the flag of green and we're going to be left out in the cold because there's not going to be enough build slots for us to, 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 to take advantage of this solution going forward. We need to get on board or get the hell out of the way. I think it's great. And I think those dams will break into the future. I'm going to be on the sideline again, uh, drinking my rum punch. I'm good. I'm good. And I'll be nicely applauding. I don't know. Maybe I'll come out with daily uploads to, to toot my own horn and say how awesome of an investor I and you guys are. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Sales. Sales are going to be the, um, the key to the bottom line integration. We can talk all day. Okay. But sales need to continue to be, they need to continue to uh, um, gain and garner sales against their order book, whether or not that be um, uh, order back to orders back by deposits or reservation orders that are binding a commercial deal. Okay. They, they need to continue to do that. Okay. Am I satisfied with the accelerated pace? No, I'm not. And people will be like, you're impatient, Ryan, you expect this and that. Oh, this are retail investors, man. All they want you to do is sell. Well, let me tell you, um, sales is going to be what uh, makes it or breaks it for the company. Um, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, you need to wait. You might be right there. Okay. This might turn out in 2024, 2025, 26, whatever it is, before we hit that uh, break even critical mass. Break even critical mass of 4,000 to uh, 5,000 units. We're, we're talking about a $75 stock here. Okay. We're not talking about a $3 stock. We're talking about a, a stock that's turning out some massive top end revenues. Okay. And I don't think they have to do a lot to garner that 140 to 155 burn rate. I think that will gradually increase over time, but I think so will the, so will their top end revenues. I believe they will. And their path to profitability because they do run such a long, uh, a lean business model, I think will be of interest to me. There's going to be some huge catalyst down the line going global. That's going to be the big one. That's where I think the share float will be released. That's where I think that capital funding raise, once the share float uh, is uh, more attractive to be released uh, at that, you know, 50, they could go ahead and release and, and dilute the share float and, and, and earn that capital capital by sharing those uh, locked up shares to the marketplace uh, and gaining that funding into the company. Uh, and that way it could help with their uh, global commercialization efforts, but that's down the line. Um, we've got some work to do to get to that break even critical mass and we'll get there inevitably. We'll get there. I believe wholeheartedly that we will. Otherwise this whole project is for naught. That is the bottom line, whether or not you like it or not, okay, is sales. And sales is something that we have to, as a community, intimately keep our eyes on celebrate these small wins when they come, but it's the domino effect. It's not necessarily the 10 orders that came through from Wholesome. It's the exposure and the trickle-down effect to what happens when Wholesome takes delivery of these units. And, and um, it's everything that they expect it to be. It's everything that they experienced at the ride and drive. It delivers on the bottom line, total cost of ownership. It allows them to haul more uh, um, um, payload. What happens then? Well, then the word of mouth gets out through industry and it's like, look, man, you need to take a second look at this company. It's incredible. Uh, they have a really, really difficult name to say, uh, but their product actually works. That indeed is the bottom line. All right. Um, number eight, uh, the bottom line, industry will drive innovation for it. That is key. Um, it, through the fleet integration that is scheduled and the fleet demos, this can be great. Um, again, I'm going to be on the sideline with my rum punch, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know the drill, um, watching to see how the fleets respond to it, what type of rigor they put the Hypertruck ERX into with their fleet demo units, um, and, 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 and what comes of it. I think it's going to be great what the drivers say, how the technology responds, how the truck itself responds. Okay. And I think sometimes this highly on opportunity gets overcomplicated in that, what we're trying to do here is move goods from point A to point B more efficiently, more effectively, and in a way that is better for the earth. That's it. Can they do it? Well, it's going to be through the fleet demos that actually drive that. And if they actually do pull this off, which I believe that they will, I believe that we've been provided uh, no, uh, no um, reason to believe that they won't you're going to talk about a bottom line benefit to the company and to the stock into the future. It's going to be awesome. All right. Um, number nine, 
results will drive the stock price. So very, very important to understand that right now, the company is stuck in a little bit of a hangover period from the SPAC area. I think, unfortunately, it's really, it's really, um, it's synced up, I think, with the Nikola and the Hyzon stock action from day to day. I think it needs to decouple from that action. So if Hylion goes on a run of fleet integration, positive feedback, certification, et cetera, these are not pipe dreams. These are inevitable milestones down the line that just need to be checked off of the, the roadmap. These are real. These aren't, I'm not making this up. Okay. These are real. And when they happen, it's going to be that one step closer to um, that, um, that opportunity to realize that those, those results that we know are possible out there to not only um, r reduce our um, dependence on fossil fuels. I, I get it. It's our very dependency on fossil fuel that uh, unfortunately renders that, um, that carbon emission score that we're looking to reduce, not eliminate, reduce. Okay, so super important there. I feel like results will drive the stock price and we're a little bit premature of realizing those results. I'd, I'd love to get some results from Aizan, um, Nicola. What is the payload? What is the maximum range under payload? What is the total cost of, of, um, of, of fueling or the hydrogen over the course of those said routes? Um, I've, I've seen none of that, okay? I've seen none of it. And in all fairness, I've really seen none of it for Hylion except for to... Uh, realize that those fuels actually exist. So if they can meet those specs, then we can um, infer that they can meet those specifications because the fuel is actually available uh, through use of the solution, all right? And number 10, we'll wrap up the video here. It's been kind of a spirited debate. This will be fun to watch on the remake. Um, I sold out on this one. This is good. This is usually when I'm at my best. Um, I, I don't mean to be pointed with my message uh, at one specific individual, but I, I think I don't really, I don't understand uh, when I'm away from YouTube, I'm doing cool things away from YouTube. When I come onto YouTube and I see that kind of thing, uh, it makes me kind of feel bad, man. It's like, it's like somebody's consumed by this, uh, this thing. And it's like, man, get over yourself. It's it, your opinion, man, is just your opinion. It's okay. Um, and, but when you start to mix fact with, with fiction, it, it's just insane. Right. And we certainly don't want to buy into this idea that because you continually, you know, put out content all the time, sometimes multiple pieces of content per day, that it makes you more right. I, I think in some capacities, you're trying to prove to yourself that you're right. And I think people see through that, or at least I hope they do. I really do. But number 10, the industry must change, and it will change. And the things that will drive that change is the incentive and the mandates. All right, this is key. This is going to be key to see how the uh, the uh, F, the fuel credits uh, and the incentives and the mandates on both the OEMs and the fleets play out. In that, I think Hylion could stand on its own, on its own merit, and sit across the table and say, "We can provide you bottom line TCO based on durability, performance, uh, and anticipated payload increase, uh, and the ability to go green through electrification. We can do all of it." Okay. And we'll save you money over the long term. You're going to have some initial upfront cost for the technology, right? Think about the benefit that you're going to get out of that. Think about the driver experience that you're going to be able to enjoy from the onset. And then that unit becomes more available uh, or valuable over time as you run the unit. The more miles that you're able to run on this unit, the better off that you'll be. And I think a, an interesting catalyst, and I'm going to throw this out there. If you guys are with me, only the would-be subscribers to the message and the highly on investors are with me this deep into the video. Most people turn off after five minutes, and I'm cool with that. Good riddance. Um, what if what if what if Hylion's able to uh, work at this high level for ten years? What if the technology is is so good that it can work under the demands of Class Eight rigor? Um, it can haul more cargo. And it's so reliable that it could work for 10 years plus. Whereas the average lifespan of a diesel truck, I don't know what it is. 
And if you guys do, I'd like to hear that in the comments section. So hit the head when we're looking at the life expectancy of a diesel truck and cost of maintenance over that time frame, right, has to be factored in. And in all fairness, the lifespan of the Hylion product and the cost of maintenance that exists between those two, it would be interesting to know what the top end lifespan of a Hylion product could be. Is it possible that it could actually go beyond 10 years and actually haul our freight from point A to point B uh, longer than the diesel trucks that we've learned to rely on for the previous few decades from the devil fuel? I don't know, just a rhetorical question I'll throw out there and we'll know that in due time, whether or not as technology improves, they're able to really realize that um, uh, lifespan enjoyment uh, in, in, in increase to what they're getting out of the diesel fleets right now. But uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how these incentives and mandates drive the fleet. These deposits that have gone down on the Hypertruck ERXs, will they be supplemented um, at the state level and federal level with mandates and incentive programs to help these companies go green? Everybody understands that there is a real tailwind behind this initiative. And I think as the pieces start to fall into place, I think instead of looking at these solutions as being uh, poorly named, or they're going to be going to the wayside because somehow CNG is going to cease to exist, or I don't know, the devil fuel is going away. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but instead of talking along those lines, perhaps maybe talk along the lines that they may stand to benefit from this wave of momentum and this push toward a greener future. And in all sincerity, I believe that all of these technologies in their specific niches will have a place to play uh, in the evolution of reducing, and I do foot stomp, reducing, not eliminating, our reliance upon fossil fuels and looking to decarbonize the fleets as we look to roll out these solutions within the fleets. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message. I appreciate it. In all actuality, you can hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button. It does help the channel immensely. More importantly, you want to leave your comments at the bottom. If I've generated some dialogue, some thought uh, for you guys, great. Um, leave the comments at the bottom. I enjoy reviewing on these. Every Sunday, we will continue to foot stomp the message here, as I believe we are in the beginning stages of one of the greatest wealth building opportunities that we will ever see in our lifetime. Mark my word. And we're going to continue to foot stomp this at the time where it is the most important to foot stomp it. And that is right now at the ground level at the very beginning stages of what this company is looking to do over the long term. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.